Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to um, Bowling Between the Bays. Just look. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Just looking at some comments <laughs> coming in already. Um, yes, yes. Um, Marie Leslie there. Yep, last week it was uh, 38 degrees, and uh, this week it is uh, snowing up on the uh, mountaintops. So, uh, unbelievable. Welcome along, folks. We have a, uh, a great day for you today. Just so you uh, know, we've got uh, Kringle 2 playing playing Belvedere and uh, we've set the rules on the cameras and uh, hope they obey. G'day to uh, Mary Leslie and uh, Ellen Worthington. Great to have you on board. Any comments? Also, uh, welcome to uh, viewers from uh, Peninsula, uh, uh, Mornington Peninsula News Group. So uh, great to have you on board. Really, uh, really pleased you can join us as well. I'm um, going out to a number of uh, places so uh, we'll keep you all up to date. Got a bit to get through today. So um, be interesting to see. Bowling between the bays. Interesting to see what uh, goes down. We've got some contacts at other clubs that bring you some scores. We'll go through the ladders, Division 1 and Division 2, to see where we're at with uh, finals uh, right upon us. We're in round 13 at the moment. And um, lots happening, lots happening. Um, also, uh, great to have some uh, advertisers on board uh, on behalf of uh, Skydome, and that's uh, Mac Max Australia, Crowder uh, Community Real Estate, Momentum Gaming, uh, ProAB Power, so uh, electrical contractors, and of course on the other side of your screen there, big uh, day coming up, uh, St Patrick's Day here at uh, Keringle, where we're playing some Crown Bowls, and we'll hear some more of that uh, later in the uh, in the show. And uh, keep keep uh, everything going out there. So uh, really, uh, really good effort today. Um, any same any comments? Please put them down on the MPBR page. It'd be great to have you uh, make some comments. And again, uh, positive comments, folks. We're here to uh, have fun. I'm not here to bag people or anything like that. Just a nice, relaxing day. Anyone wants to talk about uh, topics about bowls, we'll uh, get them through. So uh, let's go through some teams so you know who we got on rink two. So uh, let's go and uh, get those. Get those happening for you. Right, we've got uh, Sue Allen. Colin Hardigan, Gary King, and Paul uh, Mergia. So uh, they'll be uh, leading off for Keringle. Um, and uh, they're up against Belvedere today. And we'll go shortly through the ladder. And uh, just so we can get some uh, details through. So for Belvedere, we've got uh, Rod uh, Smirk. I might be corrected uh, on his pronunciation. pronunciation. Uh, he's the lead. Mel uh, Edwards is the second, Gary Strong is the third, and Dave Wood is the uh, skip. And uh, welcome them to uh, Keringle. They're just uh, just about to complete their roll-ups at the moment. So uh, once that's uh, complete, we'll get uh, into action. We're just uh, sharing some uh, Facebook pages across uh, numerous networks. So we'll also keep you up to date with what's uh, going on there. Again, thanks to our major sponsors that keep us uh, going, and that's in uh, Bendigo Bank. Um, and the group of Bendigo Banks on the morning to Peninsula do a fantastic job for, throughout the community and uh, assisting with sport and uh, community uh, events all over the Mornington Peninsula. So uh, great to have them uh, as uh, sponsors. Mike Watts, how you going, Mike? Great, to, uh, Mike's calling, from, uh, calling in from Wales. So, Mike, just for your info, uh, our uh, current temperature here is probably uh, exactly the same what you're experiencing in Wales at the moment. We had uh, 38 degrees 
last week, which is uh, just pipping the old 100 in uh, Fahrenheit. And I reckon we're at uh, 18 degrees at the moment. So we're, we're down in the 60s. So, uh, yeah, not a, not a crash hot uh, day for bowls. Good to be under the roof, under the Mac Max roof. So, uh, yes, might have, a, might have some visitors later on, I'm told. So we'll, we might uh, have a look there. Um, and we've uh, installed a new camera just for your info, just to see what uh, what we can see over various rinks. And that's because we've got St. Patrick's Day coming up uh, very shortly, where we'll look at uh, some crown bowls, and uh, it'll be on for young and old. We'll have uh, mobile cameras. I believe there's three spots left. So uh, with crown bowls, the rules are... Um, I won't say relaxed, but uh, maybe a bit more um, challenging. So we'll keep a we'll keep an eye on that and uh, take you through that as uh, as we go along. So Paul and Dave are completing their uh, roll-ups at the moment. jump into uh, into the Mornington Peninsula page so uh, anyone needs any info we can jump into there Right, uh, Sue Ellen has the mat, and uh, we'll commence. Right, uh, Sue Ellen has the mat, and uh, we'll commence. Paul uh, looking there, going for a shortish uh, option. Apologies for the camera angle, we'll get uh, that corrected very shortly. Just got some bit of work to do there, but uh, all bases covered. There's your scoreboard, folks. So, yeah, Paul Mergier up against Dave Woods. What we might do is, uh, while they're just uh, kicking off their first rounds, um, we'll just quickly have a look at uh, Division 2 North and see where we lie. So, round 13, of course. Matches today see Karingal playing Belvedere, Mornington playing Belnearing, Mornington Civic up against Mount Martha, and Rosebud versus Frankston, uh, City of Frankston. Ladder currently sits at the moment. So uh, City of Frankston, uh, sorry, Rosebud Country Club, followed by Belnearing, followed by Mount Martha, then Belvedere in fourth. So they're two games clear at the moment, so you'd have to say they're pretty safe. Uh, interesting, Mornington Civic uh, on four wins. Mornington on four wins. Interesting that both Karingal and Frankston, drawing in that 7th uh, and 8th, have five wins. 
So um, five wins, six losses. So the Belvedere side has two draws. So interesting to see what uh, what could come about today, and uh, and where they go. Uh, we'll come back uh, shortly and uh, on scores and uh, have a look around the uh, the greens and see what other matches are on, especially in Division Two South and Division One. Nice little clip. Jeez, very nice. Very nice. A lot more vocal than the Division One uh, team last week, aren't they? Gary King comes in now. Gary's just resting out the back. It's interesting, isn't it, that um, even though Karingal are on uh, seventh posse, they're uh, they're basically two games out of the uh, four, which uh, Belvedere are holding. So. Could be a very interesting week. And if we look on that and look at um, the matches today, we just discussed Karingal up against Belvedere, Mornington against Belnaring, Mornington Civic against Mount Martha, and Rosebud Country against City of Frankston. But we look at next week and it's Belvedere versus Mount Martha, Mornington Civic versus Karingal, Rosebud Country versus Mornington and uh, Belnaring versus City of Frankston. So, yeah, very interesting matches. I can let you know uh, the other teams on other rinks and we'll keep scores uh, progressive as they go along. Caff uh, Tyler, Judy uh, Taberner, David Harrison and Ted Price. Uh, from Karingal, they're up against a team from Belvedere of uh, L Robinson, Peter Wills, Shane Collins and Kevin McCormick. And then the third uh, teams, uh, the lead is John Keogh, followed by John Birch, Peter Chard and Neville Bradley. And they're up uh, against a team from uh, Belvedere, Lindsay Jackson, Lionel Moore, Robert Christie and then David Swalwell. So, uh, um, interesting. All just looking at uh, at the aspects here. at the moment actually we might uh, just pop down and have a look so we'll just go back to that as Dave Woods Dave Wood comes up Looking for a bit of weight there. That's going to take off though, isn't it? And it's cut across. That's the situation at the moment from the sidelines. So it looks like uh, Belvedere may be holding there. Could be very close. Yeah, probably. I 
can tell you that um, Belvedere have picked up three on uh, rink three. They picked up uh, one there of Belvedere, so great start for them. And that's at the completion of one end. So they'll take the mat. So Sue Willem coming in now. Again, folks, any comments? Please put them down on the um, MPBR uh, Facebook page. Pushing through a bit long. Sue coming in nicely. Just in behind. Nice shot there from Sue. Camera angle there from uh, just on top of the roof here of the clubhouse. It's holding, it's holding well for him. Just fades off at the last moment. It's from Mel Ed Edwards there. Forehand. Uh, a bit of weight in that, and that will. Uh, Drift through. Just creeping in.
Very nice. Might dig a little clip. Great bowl leg, it is. That's what he's uh, skip asked for. in there. Yep. Pushes to the advantage of Karingal. Gary now comes in. And that's just out of touch wide. Uh, the weather at the moment, so it's um, currently uh, yeah, very uh, chilly and very windy. Wind's coming in from the east, so we've got a flag on the on the screen which will just take you through as Dave Wood comes in. It's holding a nice line. Will it creep in? Jeez, it will. Wow, and that'll give him two there. Paul comes up now. But length on that is a bit long. That will push through. So I believe Belvedere holding two at the moment. comes in now. Line's nice. Mate, take it out the back. So two will get you up to date uh, with total rank scores very shortly. Completion of the second end. Of course, we're up to 21. So they're going to have a measure.
Measurement uh, saying they're in. I can tell you on other rinks here at the moment, uh, Karingal 3 are playing West Rosebud, and after six ends it is um, currently 5 all. Here on rinks 2, 3 and 4, it is uh, Karingal 2 versus Belvedere, and Belvedere have a 7 to 0 lead after 4 ends, sorry, after 5 ends. So well, I'm up with her last ball. bit of weight and that will progress out the back. Making some room there. Again, topics probably coming up for the week is probably where do uh, finals be held. We're just waiting on a decision from the uh, MPBR match committee to recommend a uh, location for the grand finals. My understanding is with uh, finals matches is that the, uh, especially uh, when the four teams are involved, is that the, uh, the top team has uh, home ground preference. Little clip and we'll drop down. Kringle desperate to get on the scoreboard here. Gary coming in nicely. are coming in on the forehand. Oh, 
looks a bit small, doesn't it? Might just give it a clip. Oh, great attempt. Might have been a bit slower there, Gary, and a bit wide. It's coming in now. Might get a little clip on the way through. It does. That'll give him two. So a bit of work to do uh, for Karingal. Uh, sorry, for Belvedere. Dave looking too upset, but I think he's just gone wide and long. Oh, jeez. Wow, he's made a uh, an effort there to, uh, to Paul now coming in. Popping out the back. So we can just see the jack behind. Uh, definitely uh, two of Gary King's bowls there. Yep, it's gone off. Say Paul will be looking to sit on top there and just uh, maybe offer some protection. Kringle picking up three on rink three, so that gets him uh, onto the scoreboard. Paul Mergia comes in. Nice release, looks okay, doesn't it? Nice little clip again. Yep. Wow. One. So they're going to take three there. So great reply there from uh, Karingle. That's the completion of the third end. length just popping around the back Jeez, it puts it, it does, it really puts the pressure on. Right, 
Rod coming in for his uh, second bowl. You might have called him Mel before. No, it's definitely Rod. He's on a same line, same line just to pop out the back. Again, folks, if you're in the area, I'd uh, encourage you to pop down, even though it's a bit chilly outside. The sun is trying to make a break for it. We'll have a look at the weather forecast for the rest of the week and also midweek bowls. So uh, what likely outcomes are uh, coming up as well. As Mel Edwards uh, comes in. They're bowling very well, uh, Belvedere, at the moment. Got the chain of thought there, so okay. I can make a score correction. Uh, the, that past end was in fact a four for Karingal. They've just updated the scoreboard there, so we'll keep that. Uh, up there as well. I can tell you that the main score, main score at the moment is 7-12 in favour of Belvedere, and that's after nine ends. So 7-12 to 12 after nine. it up a fair bit. Again, welcome to all our uh, Mornings Peninsula news group uh, viewers, also the Mornings Peninsula Bowls region and also uh, RPPFM Sports. Nice relaxing day down here at Karingal. So Paul just coming up for his uh, first bowl. Out very wide, very a uh, lot of grass there. Pushing back into the wind. 
just uh, trickle out the back there. Gorn, again, uh, thanks for our sponsors, uh, MacMax, Crowder uh, Community Real Estate, Momentum Gaming, Proab uh, Electrical, and just a reminder that I think there's only three spots left in the uh, St. Pat's Day coming up uh, very shortly. Dave Woods just on the mat now. Holding its line, isn't it? Jeez. It's a team playing on confidence there. That may give them two there. Coming in nice, jeez, you can see the line there. Oh, good call there. Result there from Belvedere. So uh, they jump back into the lead and will lead 5 4 at the completion of the fourth end. Schools and uh, people on uh, rinks there for you. Just getting around. Good call there from Paul, just showing the, the uh, width.
Sees that's coming in nicely. Wow, and trails it. Been a couple there. Punching through. So Gary Strong here. I'm saying to get out the back here. I think he's not going to get around. He's, he's going to just a little clip. Just a touch wide. Woods just going back now. Probably holding two at the moment. overall scores there. Kringle 8, Belvedere 14 and that's after 11 ends.
Paul just stepping up to the mat now. Plenty of room out the back. Some pace. And that will sail straight through. We'll leave Dave Wood now. He'll try and consolidate. Say on the backhand. come back from there might have a bit of an obstruction out the front there so Paul coming down to have a look at the moment. Let's see what he can do. We'll cut back to that shot very shortly just to see uh, Who's the call? So the uh, Belvedere side uh, is really starting to capitalise early on, quarter of the way through it. So we'll see where uh, that takes us at the moment. But they're, uh, they're bowling fairly well at the moment. Choosing a longer end. start off I'd say Sue would go in on their forehand here and just uh, got about a, a meter to a meter and a half clearance I feel like falling well short say that might go just around the outside and sit in the back nice shot there from Rod Paul asking Sue to uh, just a bit more width
Nice correction there from Sue. That'll sit there right there. Mel Edwards. Just going to cut across, but might hold its line. Set. Dave set a good second there. Just cutting short. Plenty of grass there, that'll have to come back a long way from there. Gary Strong with his first bowl of the end. Uh, heading out the back there. Holding. Wow. Nice shot inside. Crinkle holding one there. So Karingal holding one at the moment. As Dave Wood pops down the other end. We'll just get a score update there from uh, overall. And uh, Karingal nine, Belvedere 17, and that's after 15 ends.
just lowers the action as he's out wide. I don't think it'll come back from there. Very nice shot. It's given Paul an opening, he's got plenty of space. Just needs to get inside this one. Oh, it's just on the wrong side, wasn't it? Might cop a measure there. Starting to progress, uh, Belvedere. They move out to eight. That's after six ends. Right, nice shot there from the start off. Sue coming in with her first shot now. Just falling short. Great correction there. Very wide here from uh, Colin.
Right, let's go through some matches in uh, Division 1 and see what... Uh, what the ladder uh, might be happening, especially with the last two rounds happening. We'll go through uh, Division 1 for Saturday and then we'll go through uh, Division 2 South. But uh, Division 1 matches today in round 13. See Sorrento play Rosebud on the beach. So a uh, very important match for both sides. Rosebud Beach consolidating after a great win uh, last week. Um, actually, we might take you through the scores just so you're aware. So uh, Rosebud on the beach defeated um, uh, City of Frankston 62-38 to 38 down at the... The Rosebud, uh, we'll call it the Beach House down there. And they won all 16 points. Rye uh, fell short um, of Mount Eliza, with Mount Eliza winning 62-49 to 49 and taking the 60, uh, 16 points. Sorrento close, but uh, not close enough. Uh, they're going down to uh, Somerville last week, 49-59, to 59, and took two points uh, with Somerville taking 14. And then um, the last match uh, of the day last week was the match of the day, and that was Keringle versus Hastings. It says 64 to 48 with uh, Keringle taking the 14 points, but with 15 ends to go, Hastings were in the lead. So a uh, bit of bad luck there for Hastings. Um, if we pop now and have a look at, have a look, have a look at the ladder, Uh, City of Frankston still holding on. Mount Eliza second. Rosebud on the beach uh, currently third. And they've consolidated third. Kringle snuck in. They're uh, currently fourth. And they're six and six. Uh, followed by Hastings. Then Sorrento. Somerville. And Rye now bringing up the rear uh, on the bottom of the uh, Division One table. So... Um, yeah, I, uh, just looking back, I had a look back at a couple of tapes on uh, last week and just, yeah, didn't understand how uh, Hastings uh, blew that uh, blew that lead with 15 ends and, and then they really let it go to the point where um, some of them picked up uh, 10 and I think at the end of the day uh, it was 40, 42, the points. Uh, yeah, so it wasn't... Uh, just look at the score there. So with 15 ends to go, I know Hastings are on 45. So with 15 ends left, they only managed three points. So, uh, well, go back to it, see how we uh, how we travel. So if we go back and have a look at uh, South, Division 2 South. And I can tell you the teams that are uh, on today. Uh, Belnaring versus Mount Eliza, West Rosebud versus Dramana, Rye versus Hastings, and Mount Martha versus Mornington Civic. So we should have some uh, comms coming through very shortly on that. Um, just the latter there, just uh, for your info all. Hastings on top, Rye second, followed by West Rosebud, Dramana, Belnaring, Mornington Civic, Mount Martha, and then Mount Eliza. So, uh, midweek, midweek division one, um, uh, last week. And of course, was the uh, 31st of uh, January. Hasn't that time flyed? Now, yeah, Feb, coming up the 4th of Feb. Rightio, Somerville, uh, clear winners over Dramana, 66 to 46. Rosebud on the beach, clear winners over Keringle, 66 to 43. Mornington Civic going down to a uh, fast finishing Mount Eliza, 40 to 82. And Mornington on the beach, 36 to City of Frankston, 88. So, 
Paul coming in with his last shot. Yes, yes. Oh, it just faded at the last moment, didn't it? So they'll pick up two. Just make a scoreboard uh, update. Now Sue has got plenty of space here. Does she want to push some pressure back onto the Belvedere side? It's fallen short. He's coming in nicely. Little Robert. Falling short. It's going to push past.
Fade away. We'll get a ricochet here. Gary King up to the mat. Fall short. Bit of length there, that'll pop out the back. So Belvedere starting to take an impact here. They're uh, currently at the scoreboard. And the overall screen uh, coming up is 10 to 24 after 20 ends. comes in. Lots of width. Wood, Lot narrow, he's looking for that gap. Oh, he's right line, maybe just a touch more weight on that. Paul, this looks like a lot uh, touch narrower, or fade back. Coming in nicely, just needs another one. Pick up another one there. So 
And they're on a bit of a roll here at the moment. That moves them out to 11-4. Completion of eight ends. Interesting that uh, Belvedere are just pushing a bit of length into their uh, into their jack placement. Fading across the front there. Just need to correct there a bit. Needs to hold the line there. Just hold. Sit there in front. Nice line. One just needs to get in behind. Fall short. So Ellen comes up to there. I'll give Sue shot at the moment. on that will that keep on coming out the back no it's fallen short look very fast off the hand Colin now up on the ring oh, that's out too wide there have to do a lot of work to come back Just needs a little check, maybe off uh, Sue Ellen's bowl. No. score update actually that may have just changed you can just see the scoreboard in the background so that's 11 24 at the moment so 
This is online, isn't it? We'll sneak through. Yeah, that's a shot of the day so far. Gary King looking to follow. Maybe a touch wide. So looking to find the gap. I tell you what, jeez, that'll give him potentially two. Well, Gary's still going to end up out. So they'll have to do something here. Scoreboards are just updating here. As you see Dave Wood head to the uh, southern end. There's a score coming up over your screen now. Karingal 11, Belvedere 26, and that's after 23. So Dave looking to find that gap as well. Paul just looking at the options. I can tell you Kringle 3 are currently trailing West Rosebud 20 to 22. Tell you on the outside, uh, grass rink is uh, Karingal playing uh, Flinders and also Karingal playing Main Ridge. And I can give you a, a quick update. So Karingal uh, playing Main Ridge at the moment. And uh, they're currently leading 30 to 22, and that's after 26. And uh, if we pan around, we'll try and get a hold of the. Uh,
Sneaky, isn't it there? Can't see the ends, but at the moment it looks like uh, Flinders Golf Club are currently 40. I can't see the other score yet at the moment there for Keringle. I might go for a walk later and have a look around. So, um, Belvedere pick up one. As we move into the ninth end.
Skydome can ring all So folks, that's uh, it there. Uh, just going to have a quick break. While they're having a break, we'll go uh, to a couple of sponsors' messages and also to some uh, uh, things happening around town. We'll be back uh, right after the break. My name's David Allen. I'm the chairman of the board of the Karingal Bowls Club in Melbourne, Victoria. Um, I'm Philip Crowder. I'm the bowls operations manager at the Karingal Bowling Club, which is home to the wonderful Sky Dome. Well, I, I think it was uh, David, if I can give David credit for that. We are actually on Sky Road, S-K-Y-E. So it's a play on the street name, Sky Road, as in Sky Domes. We made the decision to go with the canopy because we want our members to be able to play bowls all year round. We want our working members to be able to, to uh, play after hours. So with our canopy, we, we can play bowls from sort of 8 in the morning till half past 10 at night basically seven days a week. Um, with people in the local area actually seeing the construction, we have that many social and actual members now that saw the construction, were fascinated by it, and uh, they've actually come in and become members of our club. It's, it's had tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, advantages for the club, particularly uh, we're in the middle of winter right now, and two years ago this place would have been dormant because we closed for five months of the year and now we're open 24-7, it's been fantastic. As Bowls Operations Manager, I've now implemented a Winter Bowls program, which also includes our Super League, which is an evening competition uh, with uh, $10,000 prize money, which has brought um, bowlers uh, all the way from uh, Gippsland and plus people towards the inner city as well. So um, it has been fantastic in that regard. So we have pretty well something going every day whereas before there would be no one here other than the people coming to our gaming facility. We recently had a, a state test match here, which uh, is a great honour for a club. Uh, it's very rare to, for a small club to be given um, a state, an interstate test match. And um, of course it, it's lifted the club's standing in the bowls community immensely. Because of that, we get them actually coming back again and again in fact, to become members of our Facebook page so that they're aware of our tournaments. In fact, our Facebook page has increased by 100% um, by people who keep on board and so that they know what's on so that they can actually come and play. Now, the other side benefit that is that we have multiple people who are now dual members. So they're not only members of their own clubs, but they are now members of the Kringle Bowling Club. And in fact, we've had multiple of those actually come and now join Kringle Solely as their major club. And so our sponsorship, uh, not our sponsorship, but our membership has increased dramatically. In fact, on our um, application wall at the minute, there's some 12 people waiting to see if they'll become members of our Kringle Bowling Club. In my work, I managed to get around to a few bowls clubs, uh, not only in Australia, but around the world. And uh, I've seen them all. I've seen all the brands and uh, the Mac Max application is far and above the best. It, it's, uh, it's the Rolls Royce of, um, of uh, fabric canopies and we're so proud of, of what we've got and we're happy we did it. It's an investment by Jeepers. It's a fantastic investment. And, uh, you know, often people say, would you do it again knowing what you know now? And the answer is an unequivocal yes. So Malakut is surrounded by Krojingong National Park, which is about 87,000 hectares, and it encompasses a range of vegetation communities and heaps of really unique flora and fauna species. Leading up to the fires, we had a lot of drought. Um, some moisture measurements were taken by Dwelt before the fires came through, and the moisture content was about the same as in the Mallee. That year was really bad for bushfires. It was incredibly dry. We'd had drought for a few years, and of course, because of the dryness and the drought, we hadn't been able to do a lot of fuel management, so the bush was ready to explode. One of the things that impressed me straight after the fires 
was the way the community embraced the idea of setting up MADRA, which is the community-based organisation. And one of the things that made us feel that we could go with that idea was the fact that the Bendigo Bank came behind us immediately and offered its support, offered its financial advice. That was a huge relief to us, that money that would come from donations, and there had been a lot, would be in safe hands. It's really important to support local communities in crisis because we're there for the local community. We're part of it and it's part of our DNA. So we're there both after the immediate crisis and through the long term to help and support the community grow out. We've donated $4.3 million into the local community and the solar farm that is yet to be built. Prior to the bushfires, Malakuta was powered by a single line uh, over 240 kilometres long. We have had many issues with uh, outages. Um, our power went out over 24 hours prior to the fire actually arriving. The solar farm is being built on East Gibson Water's wastewater treatment plant to provide sustainable energy to this community. So the solar farm will directly contribute to the length of time that our microgrid will sustain itself. Without the contribution of the Malakuta Community Bank, so many organizations in this town would be unable to do what they are doing. And without their support, our lives here would not be what they are. So nearly two years on after those catastrophic black summer bushfires, the bush is regenerating really nicely. Um, you just go for a stroll anywhere around town or the national park and you're seeing um, amazing regrowth. The wildflowers are absolutely incredible now and it's really awesome to see those species that we were a little bit worried about that may not recover after fire starting to recover. So we have people here who have retired, we have people here who are trying to set up businesses, we have people here who just want to go fishing. Malakuta is a really unusual place, it's a very beautiful place, that's one of the reasons why people are here. That hasn't changed, people want to be here, people love to be here. I'm very optimistic about the future. We want to stay living in a healthy, thriving, safe community for the rest of all of our lives and we are working to make that happen. There's a couple of really positive things that have come out of the community as a result of the bushfires. One is a real resilience. Uh, there's a growing optimism about how we reshape from here, given what's happened to us. Uh, a tremendously positive community spirit has arisen, even though we've been through tragedy. Everyone knows Australia has four big banks. But there's another big bank snapping at their heels. It's been around for over 160 years, has 1.9 million customers nationwide who bank in branch, online or with their mobile app and is regularly voted one of Australia's most trusted brands. Who is this bank that has everyone's attention? Welcome to Bendigo Bank, the better big bank. Established in 1988, Progress Science has been servicing the local community for 30 years. Located on the Mornington Peninsula, they are the number one destination for all your signage needs. Specialising in a variety of signage from vehicles to shop fronts, occasional and corporate events, short term, long term and everything in between. If it's signs you need, be it large or small, Progress Signs is the place to call. Available 24-7 at progress-signs.com.au or call the team on 5975 9188. Thinking Signs? Think Progress Signs, a station sponsor. Battery World now open in Mornington. We know batteries. We know our 75 D23Ls from our DIN 65 LHs. And we know which is best for you. We have the range and a spark no one else can match because we live and breathe batteries, those beautiful boxes and cylinders that power our lives and our passions. That's why we're the Batteryologists.
We're Battery World. Battery World Shop 1, 43 Mornington Tyre Road, Mornington. Hello, I'm Roy Sanderson from RJ Sanderson and Associates. We have created a 10-step roadmap to recovery for businesses. To inquire or get a copy, go to our website, rjsanderson.com.au. A station sponsor. Everyone knows Australia has four big banks. But there's another big bank snapping at their heels. It's been around for over 160 years has 1.9 million customers nationwide who bank in branch, online or with their mobile app and is regularly voted one of Australia's most trusted brands. Who is this bank that has everyone's attention? Welcome to Bendigo Bank, the better big bank. The Mornington Peninsula Bowls region asks you to check out why Lawn Bowls in the Mornington Peninsula is just for you. It's fun, it's social and it's affordable. That's right, it's fun, it's social and it's easy to learn. There are over 25 bowls clubs on the Mornington Peninsula which offer free lessons and the free use of bowls. Get on the green now. Lawn Bowls on the Mornington Peninsula is more than just a game. Station sponsor. Everyone knows Australia has four big banks. But there's another big bank snapping at their heels. It's been around for over 160 years, has 1.9 million customers nationwide who bank in branch, online or with their mobile app and is regularly voted one of Australia's most trusted brands. Who is this bank that has everyone's attention? Welcome to Bendigo Bank, the better big bank. My name's David Allen, I'm the Chairman of the Board of the Karingal Bowls Club in Melbourne, Victoria. Um, I'm Philip Crowder, I'm the Bowls Operations Manager at the Karingal Bowling Club, which is home to the wonderful Sky Dome. Well, I, I think it was uh, David, if I can give David credit for that. We are actually on Sky Road, S-K-Y-E. So it's a play on the street name, Sky Road, as in Sky Domes. We made the decision to go with the canopy because we want our members to be able to play bowls all year round. We want our working members to be able to, to uh, play after hours. So with our canopy, we, we can play bowls from sort of 8 in the morning till half past 10 at night basically seven days a week. Um, with people in the local area actually seeing the construction, we have that many social and actual members now that saw the construction, were fascinated by it, and uh, they've actually come in and become members of our club. It's, it's had tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, advantages for the club, particularly uh, we're in the middle of winter right now, and two years ago this place would have been dormant because we closed for five months of the year and now we're open 24-7, it's been fantastic. As Bowls Operations Manager, I've now implemented a Winter Bowls program, which also includes our Super League, which is an evening competition uh, with $10,000 prize money, which has brought um, bowlers uh, all the way from uh, Gippsland and plus people towards the inner city as well. So um, it has been fantastic in that regard. So we have pretty well something going every day whereas before there would be no one here other than the people coming to our gaming facility. We recently had a, a state test match here, which uh, is a great honour for a club. Uh, it's very rare to, for a small club to be given um, a state, an interstate test match. And um, of course it, it's lifted the club's standing in the bowls community immensely. Because of that we get them actually coming back again and again in fact to become members of our Facebook page so that they're aware of our tournaments. In fact our Facebook page has increased by a hundred percent 
um, by people who keep on board and so that they know what's on so that they can actually come and play. Now, the other side benefit that is that we have multiple people who are now dual members. So they're not only members of their own clubs, but they are now members of the Kringle Bowling Club. And in fact, we've had multiple of those actually come and now join Kringle solely as their major club. And so our sponsorship, uh, not our sponsorship, but our membership is increased dramatically. In fact, on our um, application wall at the minute, there's some 12 people waiting to see if they'll become members of our Kringle Bowling Club. In my work I managed to get around to a few bowls clubs, uh, not only in Australia but around the world. And uh, I've seen them all, I've seen all the brands and uh, the Mac Max application is far and above the best. It, it's, uh, it's the Rolls Royce of, um, of uh, fabric canopies and we're so proud of, of what we've got and we're happy we did it. It's an investment by Jeepers, it's a fantastic investment. and. Uh, you know, often people say, would you do it again knowing what you know now? And the answer is an unequivocal yes. Apologies, folks. We had some uh, visitors uh, come into our uh, studio, but uh, they'll be back with us uh, shortly. Might have a surprise for you. So uh, uh, and that might be in the form of a uh, special guest that uh, might come on and uh, commentate here, and just have a bit of a chat, and uh, might be uh, very uh, well known to all of you. So uh, just stand by. We're just coming back from a break. We'll be back shortly.
Welcome back, folks. Sorry about the uh, mix-up. We've had a uh, couple of guests, um, and I'm, we're hoping to get that guest on the uh, on the live stream. So uh, hopefully he'll be out shortly. Let's keep you up to date with what's going on here at uh, Skydome by firstly taking that off, and we can tell you that after uh, 33... That after 32 ends, uh, Belvedere are currently 33 and Karingala 21. Um, on ring two here, uh, Karingala made a massive uh, comeback and uh, currently trailing 10-12 after 11 ends. Uh, we'll go through the other ones uh, very shortly. So they're uh, they're back in contention, Karingal. So uh, really good to see. We'll also keep up to date with uh, what's going on around uh, the other greens. I can tell you Karingal at 25, West Rosebud at 32. That's after 37 ends. Um, and I'll get you some uh, scores on the uh, Flinders as well as the Main Ridge matches as well. So uh, they're just uh, coming... Back into screen now. So you can see some scores there in the background. We'll keep you up to date there. Don't forget St. Patrick's Day um, and the Crown Bowls that's happening there. Also, like to thank our uh, sponsors, Mac Max, Crowder Community Real Estate, Momentum Gaming, and ProAb Electrical, and of course our major sponsor, Bendigo Bank, which uh, are, are fantastic uh, across the whole Mornington Peninsula. Come back uh, for uh, Karingal to pick up uh, six shots over two ends. So we'll get that uh, up uh, now. So Sue Ellen, uh, maybe a change of tactics, going a bit longer. So uh, Sue coming up now. Bit of moment. Tracking around. Nice weight. Nice response there, great response. Nice 
nice call here, Rod. Just asking how uh, how much distance to increase. Just needs to hold in. Will creep. Just sit on the back there. Be interested to see what momentum comes of this now. Mel Edwards. The weight's deceiving, isn't it? It looks like a fair bit on it. Oof. Yep. Just lost concentration there a bit. Reply. Jeez. Jeez, nice reply. Jeez, I think that's why uh, Belvedere are in their position they are in now. if he uh, hit that a lot fuller. <laughs> Gary Strong. I think Karingal will take that one. That's of course the Colin Harrington bowl coming in. Gary with his final bowl, but that's going to be off. Might get a bit of a... No, it's going to cut the gap there. And pop all the way through. Steps up to the mat. Oh, has it got time to get around? Oh, it's 
Could be a handy bowl, that one. Dave Wood. Very uh, meticulous when he uh, comes to his placement there. Nice move release. Looks to cause a bit of damage, and he will. It's pretty precise, isn't it, what he's done there? Fair bit here. Start to turn in now. A nice weight. So this would be interesting here. Bring the score back to uh, 11 12. Gonna cut inside, is it? No, it is on track. Tor. Oh. Good attempt. Great attempt actually. So that'll give uh, Kringle the uh, the score. Brings them uh, right back into it. I'll give you an update uh, from across as we go in. 22th. I can tell you after uh, 34 ends, it's 22.36 in favour of Belvedere. So Belvedere have picked up a couple. Uh, quickly have a look at the uh, score update as it uh, comes in and sees uh, Keringle 21 to Belvedere 36 and that's after 34 Asu just pops a bit wide there Cole Harrington now. Looks like the right uh, width, doesn't it? Cutting back in nicely. So it's short by about a metre.
Could we get a little check? No. Could be just inside. Might get a check. Might, might. Now I'm just popping inside, folks, because we've got a special guest inside. And we might now, so you might lose me. We'll see how we...
Olur. <laughs> Sorry, folks, that was the uh, sound effects of the uh, knee hitting the... Uh... <laughs> so just give you a score update. It is uh, currently uh, 39 to 22 after 35 ends. And on uh, rink two here, the score is currently 11-13. Just updating that scoreboard now. <laughs> Just to give you the tip, folks, I've been rest assured that uh, into the commentary chair will uh, jump uh, Jeremy Henry. So uh, he's down here at Skydome, uh, just arrived, hence all the delays and uh, all the mucking around. But Jeremy's going to jump in, have a chat. Hey. Right, folks, so uh, welcome aboard. Um, just completing up now, we'll just go to the scoreboard and get an update for you what's going on. And uh, Kringle have come back. They've uh, shot uh, seven shots in the last three ends, but uh, Belvedere still holding the line. But uh, with me at the moment, special guest is uh, Jeremy Henry. How you been? Good. Good to be here. Um, trip down, first time in Melbourne, or you been... So we'll say this year, in this year we'll say. Yeah, this year. Oh, it's good to go to a few different clubs and uh, see a few different things. And um, I suppose, why are you down here? What, you just having a look around? Oh, well, we're down here with the board of the directors and uh, the general manager. We're looking at a few uh, different undercovers. We're looking to make a few changements. Yep. We're, and we're trying to get the right surface and the right lid over the top. Right. How's your bowling going? I'm getting too old to bowl. Oh, yeah? so. You're not going over an arm yet, are you? No, yeah. Too many young guys at our club, they, they, uh, they used to grind you down. No, that's great. So um, with with that, I suppose, um, yeah, we've got some technology here that we use here at uh, Keringle, and um, um, maybe one day you could pick some stuff up like that and uh, see how it goes up your club up there. Oh, that'd be great, because uh, we're looking at, you know, we've got the grill up to legal, and we're looking at enhance a few things and uh, get a few down you guys yep. on it and uh, host a few tournaments and stuff like that. And we're trying to update our team knowledge. Nice. And with Rural, what what are the main things coming up there at the moment? Well, we've got a four side next, not next week, the week after. That's about it. And then penance come up, so uh, yep. our penance start for the next probably three months. Is it good? And uh, that's more or less it. Oh, we've got a lot of zone championships as well coming up. The whole season's changed about the calendar's now June to June, not and January that, to January. It, it is, it's, so it's, it's all, it's it's all flipped. Changed, it's all changed in New South Wales. So we try and arrange your club championships around it as well. And it's just been hard, but you just have to go with the flow. That's great. And I suppose um, some highlights personally for yourself. What's coming up uh, for yourself this year? Oh, for me, oh. I don't know. 
There's no, there's no camera. There's no cameras in here. No, we're, we're, we're all good here. Oh, as I said, I'm, I've took a step back. I'm not playing as much as I used yeah. to. So, but I, I like watching the boys play, like Gary Kelly and Corey Wedlock and Teasy are all part of the club. So, next is coming up. BPL's coming up, I think, and I'm managing team with Dundonong. So oh, fantastic! Oh, you're managing down there. Yeah, fantastic. We've, 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 uh, we were lucky enough to win the last two. Yeah. So we're going for the three feet. So hopefully Kazza can uh, play a few balls and we can get over the line there. But uh, it's a hard competition. Playing against a lot of good players. And it's a short format, so things have to happen for you to win these yep. things, you know. And with that, um, the format, I suppose, it, it improves everything, doesn't it? The notability of bowls and what goes on and people watching. Oh, so the audience? It, of course it does. Like, obviously, when you're playing bowls, it's usually the longer games, which is hard to televise. And yeah live stream and stuff like that but you get the BPL the UBCs it's a little shorter games and it's easier to watch but obviously it's hard to play in because it's hard to win it's because it's a shorter format and it's it's uh, millimetre perfect isn't oh, it oh, yeah. luck, more luck involved as well you have to play well yes yep. but you need few results and if you're playing three four five ends it's it's different park plays stuff like that it's it's a different game you know you've got your your normal games, you play your nationals over 21 ends and all that, but you start to watch too. You know, we don't do the watch stuff like that. It's yep. So and here, I'll let you. I'll let you loose on the open here. Your thought on the uh, second division uh, MPBR bowling at the moment on the, on the screen now? Oh, it's going good. It's going good. The carpet's nice. The weather's good. The we're in Melbourne's cold. We were just. So, uh, a, a, I'm glad we're under a lead here because it's rained for the last two days. Yeah. Well, it's great. Uh, you only get this in Melbourne because last Saturday was 38 degrees and we were all sweating like you wouldn't believe. And uh, it's snowing up on the Alps uh, this morning. So, uh, yeah. Well, put it this way, I came down yesterday had shorts and a t-shirt. Didn't even pack a jacket. It was freezing. Uh, uh, like and it. I come from Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> and I was cold. Yeah. And there, and there you go with uh, Melbourne folks. So, uh, we had some uh, people tuned in earlier that were coming in from Wales. So, uh, we're sending us some notes. So, um, not sure if he's still on the phone there or on the line. Um, Mike Watts watching from uh, from Wales. So uh, we get a get a couple there. So, uh, but uh, David Clark uh, popped down to Berwick Bowls Club and asked uh, how the undercover uh, uh, went with those that uh, who did the job down there. So he's asking to go down to Berwick down there and I have a. Actually, one there tomorrow. Oh well, that'd That's be good. The tour finishes tomorrow, I think. So. Uh, yep. Yeah, pop Berwick. down to Dandenong as well. I think Berwick, Berwick Dandenong, I think yep. we'll bomb them too as well. And you've got the entourage travelling with you at the moment. Yeah, we've got all the directors that make all the big decisions at our club. They do. So. They, 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 they normally got the checkbook as well, haven't they? Oh, <laughs> well, they do. You know, that's... Uh... No, that's great. But uh, can you tell us some of your sponsors or some of the people who give you a hand up at um, uh, Warilla? What do you mean, sponsors? Uh... That look out, that help assist the club and all that? You have some of those oh, up there? Oh, we have a few for the club. There's not, you know, we, we get Warrigal help us out, Forex Gold, but it's more or less a club thing. Oh, they they, back, they back all the club and then it, it's farmed out to some tournaments we have with them. But they'd be the giving that stuff away, Because we're, we're a pretty big club. So yep. You know, well, you're the, the world's biggest. Yeah. Well, one, well, one of them. That's what I'm, I'm told. I'm reliably told by the, by, by the great man Dave Allen that you are the world's biggest club. Oh, we do a lot of things right. We all events. World Cup's coming back this year, so the World Cup this year, which is over. But nah, that's great. Two countries or something coming to us this year. Yep. Biggest ever. So I'm going to have to work it this year. I've normally played on it, so it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long seven days. I'm going to have to work, but uh, it's all good. Yeah, it's, we're we're a big club, but we host a lot of events and try and get the sport out there and stuff like that. We're trying to make ourselves better because we get two outdoor. Well, we've got three outdoor things at the minute. Indoor surface, but we're looking to put one of the outdoor to a you know under uh, cover synthetic yep. to cover all bases. And you find uh, my understanding is um, in New South Wales you still have three group uh, penance, not four. Is that right, or is that different? Down here we have three groups of four in penance. We play three. We, we we play three ranks, not four ranks. Yeah, three. So, so we used to play four down here at MPBR. But recently swapped to three, we find it's a lot easier. Maybe pushes the bowlers through and gives them a better chance of uh, well, uh, turning e around. Even down there, you play for your penance last for six months, don't they? Yeah. So, up our way, we only last. We're about to start our penance season. 
for the last like, three months usually. Yeah, our greens normally freeze up during uh, during winter, especially the outside ones. Well, they, well, well, they don't do it in summer either. No, no. They do no. for the last two days. I think it's pretty freeze at the minute. Try, try and hang around for Monday, Tuesday. I think it's 27 then, but uh, <laughs> today's not hanging uh, too good at the moment. So. Well, better than yesterday. But it's, uh, look, Jeremy, it's great to have you along. Really appreciate your time and uh, spending uh, with us and hope you enjoy the facilities here. And yeah, pop down to Berwick and uh, pop down to uh, Dandenong, have a look down there and see what, uh, what travels down there. Good to be here, pleasure. Thanks, Zach.
Radio, that was an interesting chat with um, Jeremy, Jeremy Henry, great bloke. So um, sorry, uh, uh, pardon the interruptions and just moving on and uh, over all those places. But uh, yeah, just wanted to catch up and uh, see what was uh, happening. So let's go to scores. It's currently 26 to 42 after 42 ends. Um, Belvedere holding. Um, let's go through a couple of rinks for you. I can tell you uh, Karingal on rink two. Karingal on rink two. Um, they're currently, um, that match is, I'll tell you who that match is is John Keogh, John Birch, Peter Chard and Neville Bradley. They're up against uh, Lindsay Jackson, Lionel Moore, Robert Christie and David Swalwell. And uh, they're currently uh, trailing 10-11. Uh, I suppose on the main rink, um, we'll call that rink bar four. Uh, Karingal four, trailing uh, Belvedere 17. So that's uh, Kaf Tyler, Judy Tavener, Dave Harrison and Ted Price. They're up against um, Ellen Robinson, Peter Wills and Shane Collins and Kevin McCormick. So yeah, that's where a bit of hurt's going on at the moment, 4 to 17. So uh, the rest are pretty close. Um, thanks for all the feedback. That, uh, who else was uh, contacted there as well? Uh, as we just go back to our Facebook event. Dave, uh, Dave Clark here, yeah, they'll be popping down to Berwick. So I think they're coming down tomorrow and they're going to drop in a Dandenong. So uh, good to see uh, how they uh, travel. Don't forget St. Pat's Day, folks. I think there's three spots left. Uh, get a shirt, get some food, as we just change uh, camera angles there. Uh, get some food, get some, get a pint of Guinness, and get the experience of playing Crown Bowls here at uh, Karingal. There'll be a camera following uh, each of the seven, I believe it is. Seven groups. Might be a couple more. And there'll be, uh, once the seven groups finish, they'll interchange with another seven, so that'll uh, keep on going there. Um, just also uh, looking at uh, Karingal 3 versus West Rosebud, I can tell you the score is 33 to 44, and that's after 49 ends. Um, and here... It's after 49 in. Sorry, and Karingal 2 that we're watching uh, here. The overall is uh, 26 to 43, and that's after 43 ends. I'm going to try and pop down and have a look at... Um, see how they're travelling against uh, Main Ridge, I believe they're playing. And I can tell you it is Karingal 57 to Main Ridge 39. And that is after 47 ends. 47 ends. Um, I'm trying, having difficulty in getting the uh, Bell Nearing score. And that looks like it's not being updated. I can flick through the items. 1423. 21. I can tell you that in uh, the Flinders score, it is currently around 63 to 34 in favour of Flinders. So um, we'll keep you up to date on that. Let's get back into this uh, last couple of ends here in the bowls on uh, rink two.
So Colin coming in now. It's uh, 15 uh, at the moment. short. Holding one definitely there. Oh, it's out touch of white. Just sense that uh, Belvedere just lost a bit of momentum here at the moment. So only uh, five ends to go. Gary King will trace the, his bowlers that come. Coming in now. It's popped out wide. Dave Wood now comes in. It's got the right width, hasn't it? Jeez, jeez, that is uh, very close. Just having a look there. Yeah, I think he might have it there. So Paul coming up now. It's going to look to disturb that pack there. That was a monster shot there from Dave. All right, Paul coming in. Be a touch wide. That'll push out the back. That could favour his last bowl. Geez, I just mentioned uh, one or two ends ago that um, Belvedere might have just uh, taken their foot off the accelerator a bit. Well, 
I've actually jumped on it now. Maybe just a bit unbalanced there at his release, but it's similar uh, width. Cut across my gap. Yep, so they pick up two there. That gives them some room there at the completion of the uh, 17th end. a score on to 18. I'll just have a look at the score. So I can tell you Karingal have hit the lead on uh, rink three. They're currently leading 13-11 after 15. And uh, on rink four, uh, Karingal mounting a comeback. Uh, after 15 ends, it's currently 7-17. So the score, 32-45 to 45 in favour of Belvedere. And that's uh, after 47 ends. So we've got roughly around uh, 14 ends to uh, play. Nice shot there from Rod. Sue Ellen now. Nice response. Just inside. Great correction there, fantastic correction. Straight on the money there. Geez, Karingal are trying to make the uh, the punches, but there's some uh, great defence there going on by uh, Belvedere. All right, just got an overall score uh, popping up uh, on the screen now for you. Tell you, Kuringal 3 are currently 35 to West Rosebud 46, and that's after 52 ends. Great to have those uh, people with chainsaws down the road just uh, clipping away at those trees. Looks like there were some storms overnight, and they've uh, fallen some trees down.
stress. Division two bowls, we're all here to have fun. Again, thanks to our uh, sponsors, uh, Mac Max, Crowder Community Real Estate, Momentum Gaming, and uh, Pro Ab Electrical. And of course, don't forget the uh, St. Patrick's Day event here at Keringle. Three tickets left, $100 each. Crown Bowls, get you a shirt. Of course, uh, BA approved with your name on it. Get you a meal. Get you, uh, I think, a couple of rounds uh, of uh, Crown Bowls. And um, also some prize money on offer. And uh, a pot of Guinness as well. Tell you what, there's some movement happening on uh, rink four. Kringle of uh, were down three shots to 17. They've uh, bounced back and they are now 10 at 17 after 16 ends. I can tell you on uh, rink three, Kringle are winning 13 at 12. And of course, here the score is actually, the score's just been revised. Interestingly. And uh, we'll take that back to uh, the score marked on the scoreboard. And that is 17. So 12 17. And of course, that's after 17 ends. So uh, four ends uh, to travel here. So, uh, very open uh, here at the moment. I can tell you, Karingal are getting... Uh, uh, are down at the moment to Flinders. Flinders are currently leading well. And I'll just pop over for a check on Main Ridge score. And I can tell you, uh, Karingal are leading there 60 to 39 after 50 ends. Dave Wood comes in now. Just needs a little clip. Oh, needed to roll, didn't it? Needed just that uh, push over to the edge. Dave Wood. I think he likes it. Maybe a bit of speed there. Yep. Under Belvedere there at the moment. Couple surrounding.
that makes it uh, 18 and it's after 18 ends as we just uh, pop over there No score change uh, on rinks three or four. Still 13-12 in favour of Karingal. And 17-10 in favour of Belvedere. The score here is currently 10, uh, sorry, 12 to uh, 18. And that's after uh, 18 ends. Rod comes up to the mat now. A sensational start. Jeez. So he's just cutting across. to be following the same line. Jeez. That is fantastic bowling. Great work there from Rod. starting to narrow I can tell you uh, rink 4 has picked up 2 shots and they're trailing uh, 17 to 12 on uh, rink 3 as Collins uh, ball comes in, might get a snick no, yeah, just a little one um, on rink uh, 3 it is currently 13-12 uh, in favour of Karingal so uh, Ringle needs a big one here.
So Paul's got a wide opening here that he can get. Uh, I think Gary's just uh, shown him the spot where to hit. I think it's going to fall short. So there's two there. Pick for two. Final end uh, coming up now. So, let's pop up and have a look at the scoreboard there, just so we can get an idea of what's uh, happening. So, uh, rink four, currently 14-13 in favour of Karingal. On rink five, 13-17 in favour of Belvedere. There you go, folks. Overall, Karingal 42, Belvedere 51, and that's after 55 ends. But I've got Cole uh, there just updating the scores. Shot there from uh, Colin. So he comes in again. Colin might get a clip here. Uh, just break some pushes the Belvedere bowl closer to the uh, the ring.
So coming into the last uh, end, folks, as we uh, just take a look around, we can see the Jacks... Uh, Jack's position just off uh, outside the boundary, or sorry, just inside the boundary marker. And Karingal holding two. So they're coming in. Just on the main screen there. Just looking at the options. I'll swap between the other shots so you have a look there and see what goes on. You can just see the jack off to the uh, the right of screen. Uh, sorry, the left of screen. Bit of debate whether the uh, the bowl is in play. I think they're trying to get the bowl removed. Let's have a look. Well, uh, there it is. Are they going to the toolkit? I think they might be. So that's the uh, debate at the moment. If we go and have a look at the score, the score currently sits at uh, 15 to 21, and we're at 57 ends. Mighty come back from uh, rink, rink four. They've come back from uh, three shots to 17. They've won every end for the last uh, six ends, and they're uh, trailing 15 to 17. And I can tell you, Karingal are winning rink three, and that's 14 to 13, with uh, 18 ends gone. So, uh, the telescopic site is in action. So we're just seeing what uh, happens there. They're just making a judgment call now. Very scientific, isn't it? All right, so they're coming in now. Gary's still making his uh, call. Wow, so he's called, uh, the umpire has called the uh, bowlers, in fact, out. So Karingal holding two at the moment. And that will...
all travel inside. That's not going to make it there. Dave Wood's been uh, in pretty good form at the moment. So he's come down to have a look. They're currently leading 14, uh, sorry, 21-14 on the 20th end. Always gets uh, tricky this end of the, uh, as we pop around and have a look. Uh, so picking up two shots here, 44-251, at currently sitting at the moment, 57 ends. Of course, it goes to 63 ends. Um, two shots would make it 46 to 51. Rink four is coming home like a house on fire. They're currently trailing 15-17. And rink three is currently holding at 14-13. So uh, potential to win two rinks, but uh, the overall result is just... Uh, a bit so here goes uh, Dave Dave Wood yep and he's cut it down to two there uh, it's down to one shot and that'll be it folks so uh, looking at uh, results and how things are panning out at the moment We'll just uh, take a quick look. Um, that brings it up to 15 to 21. So I think it'll be a bit of hard work there for Karingal to make the, uh, the final end, uh, especially with the other two rinks in play. We might uh, call it quits there. Folks, it's been a great uh, afternoon. Don't forget, next week we'll be back here at uh, Karingal for the final round of pennant season then we're into finals um it's been great having you we'll catch you uh next week you've been listening and watching our double pfm bowls